Johnny was buried with his mother's necklace on his grave, but one day a group of friends removed it. Their little theft awakens the demonic Johnny, who is hell-bent on retrieving the necklace. This action-packed, relentless thriller will give you chills until the very last moment. The movie begins when Iran and Colt discover a beautiful gold necklace hanging on a stick in the ruins of a fire tower in the middle of a dense forest. Colt wants to take the necklace and analyzes it, noting that it is made of gold. Iran stops him from taking anything from this place, as it is an old graveyard. Besides, there are mysterious stories about this place, but Colt doesn't believe any of them. Iran is practically afraid of the stories and wants to leave the place soon, so he turns around. Colt follows him, but before leaving, removes the gold necklace hanging on the stick and leaves. At the same time, a strange rustling sound begins, and the stick, embedded deep in the ground, starts shaking as if someone is about to emerge from it. Suddenly, a muddy hand emerges from the ground, and a human figure slowly rises, taking some time to stand tall. It is disfigured and clearly not human, and it begins walking in the direction where Iran and Colt went. The man slowly continues walking through the forest and comes across a trap set for animals. A few yards away, he stops near the animal trap, where a dead animal is caught and its body is rotting. Suddenly, he hears a car horn honking and starts moving toward it. The sound is coming from a hut in the forest belonging to an old man named Chuck. Chuck is very angry with the rangers for setting traps for animals and warns them that he will take action if they come near his territory again. The ranger leaves in his vehicle while Chuck enters the back door of his hut, still angry and cursing the ranger. The corpse follows him into the hut, but Chuck does not notice. As the corpse enters the main door, Chuck leaves the hut from the front door. The apartment is full of heaps of trash, and a reporter is reading the news on the TV. Suddenly, the corpse turns around and sees the hanging necklace in the mirror. It reminds him of his father, who once said that this necklace belonged to his mother and that he should keep it close, so they would always be close to each other. It is Johnny's corpse, and Johnny turns around to get the necklace. Just as he is about to extend his hand to grab it, Chuck points his gun at him but misses the shot. In the meantime, Johnny grabs the gun from Chuck's hand, and Chuck runs to save his life from the disfigured Johnny. After a few steps, Chuck's leg gets caught in the trap set by the rangers, and he cannot free himself from the iron clamp attached to the chain. Miserable and helpless, Chuck shouts, screams, and pleads for help, but there is no one around. Meanwhile, Johnny approaches and smashes his face. Afterwards, Johnny goes back into the cabin to get the necklace, but it is not his necklace. He starts walking again and passes by Chuck's corpse. A car filled with the loud noise of young boys and girls drives by, and Johnny begins walking in its direction. By the time he reaches the group of friends who came here to spend the night in the forest, it is already too dark. They sit around the fire, sip beer, and make light jokes. Chris has brought her boyfriend, Troy, with her friends, and he is quite uncomfortable with Colt's frankness with his girlfriend. Iran and Colt found the necklace in the ruins of a tower, and now Colt asks Iran to share the story he was talking about earlier. Iran recounts that his uncle used to tell him a story about a white pine massacre that happened 70 years ago. The story begins when a logging company leased a 100-mile area in each direction and brought workers to the site. The usual household items were far away, and there was only one shop that served the needs of all the families. However, the cunning shopkeeper had set the rates too high. The shopkeeper had a son named Johnny who was not very bright. People used to express their anger toward his father on poor Johnny, and one day a man asked him to meet at the fire tower promising to bring a lot of toys. Johnny went there, but there were no toys, only a man with a firefighter's mask on his face. Johnny got so terrified that he fell off the tower and died. The man, terrified of a murder charge, put the firefighter's mask on Johnny's face to make it look like Johnny had fallen from the tower while playing by himself. Later, Johnny's father accused the log company workers of his murder, and they started fighting him. In the ensuing fight, the mob killed Johnny's father, and the logging company took no action against anyone. A week later, some company officers came to visit the area, and that night, all the workers were killed. There was no clue about the murderer. The police closed the case, saying that the workers had died of food poisoning. 
The company compensated the widows with a large sum of money, but people said that Johnny and his father had come to take revenge and killed the entire camp. The story ends and Brody makes fun of it, calling it a made-up version of a horror thriller. Aurora asks everyone to gather as she wants to take a selfie, and Johnny is standing right behind them in the picture. The picture, taken with Flash, captures his image. Then everyone puts out the fire and goes to rest, while Johnny slowly begins walking toward their huts. He grabs an axe hanging from a wall and stops in front of a window where Chris is angry because Troy could not make jokes with her friends. Johnny then hides in the bushes and hears Aran mention he is going for a walk in the woods, while Brody makes fun of him, saying he is going to chase the gas station girls. Meanwhile, Johnny passes by their cabin and follows Iran, who is listening to loud music. Johnny attacks him from behind a tree and chops off his head, which separates from his torso. Afterwards, he drags Iran's body with his head in hand toward the ranger station. The station is empty, and after leaving Iran's body on the floor, Johnny moves toward the various chopping tools hanging on the wall. He takes a good look at a picture of a group of rangers and removes the fire safety mask hanging on the wall among the tools after shattering the glass that secures them. Afterwards, Johnny walks out of the ranger station and within a few hours, it is already morning. Suddenly, Johnny hears girls chattering and turns in that direction. They are Aurora and Brody. Johnny leaves his axe by a log and walks into the water where he suddenly disappears. At the same time, Brody invites Aurora to swim, but Aurora refuses, saying she will be doing yoga and then head to her cabin. Brody promises to join her later and continues swimming as Aurora leaves. Only a few moments pass while Brody is swimming before she suddenly screams and disappears. She reappears on the water's surface a moment later, asking for help, but Johnny drags her back underwater. She does not resurface, and soon her corpse appears on the surface. Johnny walks out of the water carrying a rusted small rod and an iron chain wrapped around his body. Aurora is doing yoga with her back toward Johnny and assumes it is Brody. When she turns around and sees the creepy Johnny, she cannot run away as there is a cliff behind her. She stands still as Johnny inserts the hook into her stomach and rips off her head. After throwing her body down, Johnny turns around to find the others, as one of them might have his mother's necklace. After a very long walk across the water, he retrieves his axe and approaches the huts. Colt is very worried that three of their friends are missing and believes they must report it to the police. Troy is stubborn, thinking Iran is not missing but merely took a walk to chase the girls at the gas station while Brody and Aurora are together. Chris is also very terrified. Colt wants Troy to give them the car keys so they can go to the nearby police station. Instead of handing over the keys, Troy throws them toward Colt, and the keys fall right near Johnny. The keychain attached to them is a toy car. As a kid who loved toys, Johnny looks at it for a while and removes his face mask. Troy and Chris's conversation catches Johnny's attention. They mention that the camera captured a photo of a strange figure behind them last night. Stubborn Troy insists it is just a shadow, which angers Johnny once again. He smashes the toy car before Colt approaches, searching for the car keys and then chases them with his mask on. Chris and Colt leave in the car while Johnny takes a wooden stick and wedges it against the car horn, making it honk, which frustrates the already short-tempered Troy. Johnny walks around the hut and picks up the axe. He smashes it into Troy's leg just as Evan shoots a bullet into Johnny's body. Johnny quickly helps Troy up after applying a cloth around the leg wound. But as they move forward, Johnny wakes up again and throws the axe, shattering Evan's skull. Troy tries to run away with his injured leg but cannot move. Johnny smashes his head with a large stone. Afterwards, Johnny searches Troy's pockets for the necklace but finds none. Meanwhile, Colt and Chris return after discovering that Iran is dead and realize they need to flee as well. Just as Chris discovers that Troy is already dead, she leans on his corpse. At the same time, Johnny notices his mother's necklace hanging around her neck and throws the axe at her. Hearing Colt's voice, Chris moves aside and narrowly avoids the attack. They quickly leave the area in their car and report Johnny's presence at the ranger station. The ranger is well aware of the White Pine Massacre, and his father was a victim too. He shouts that they shouldn't have removed the necklace, as it was the only thing keeping Johnny buried. At the same time, Johnny gets closer, 
and the ranger shoots a bullet. Johnny falls down, but the ranger knows it's only a temporary effect and that Johnny will wake up soon. He wants his companion to grab chains and bind Johnny's legs and arms quickly. However, the companion is too afraid to do so. So when the ranger leans in to do it himself, Johnny grabs the ranger's hand and crushes the bones. Chris and the other ranger run away, but Johnny severely injures the ranger and drags him inside the cabin where he uses a log cutting machine to chop off his limbs and neck one by one. Johnny keeps walking when he suddenly hears a sound behind him. It's Colt inviting him to attack, but Johnny doesn't stop and continues walking. Chris tries to stop Colt from calling Johnny, but Colt insists it's his plan to divert Johnny's attention while Chris runs to the fire tower to prepare a trap to bury Johnny. Johnny hears this, and the next time Colt calls his name, Johnny suddenly turns around and attacks Colt's head with an axe. Chris stands still as Johnny doesn't stop after one stroke. He continues attacking Colt's head repeatedly. Chris watches in horror as Colt's head is smashed and realizes that it all started when they took Johnny's mother's necklace. She quietly removes the necklace, places it on her suitcase, and discreetly starts walking backward. She runs through the forest and by morning, finds herself returning to the same place where Johnny is smashing Colt's head. She is terrified and hears the painful screams of those who died in this place. The horrible sounds of animals are breaking her nerves, but she continues walking until dawn. Exhausted, she suddenly steps on a sharp piece of wood that injures her ankle. She painfully removes the splinter from her leg and searches for a way out of the dense forest. The thudding and screaming sounds are now silent. Finally, Chris reaches a road and waits for a vehicle to take her to the city. A car stops and a woman gives her a ride to the nearby hospital. The woman asks about the reason for Chris's injured foot. Initially, Chris says it's due to an accident, but then she tells the woman that an animal attacked her. The woman mentions that she has seen worse accidents in these woods, noting that many people and animals have been found in the forest, butchered badly. The police claim it was a wolf, but surprisingly, if it were a wolf, it wouldn't eat any part of its prey, leading her to believe it certainly wasn't a wolf. Besides, the woman's brother was a cop and many years ago he saw blood all over the place and followed the tracks to discover a butchered body. It didn't look like a bear had done it, so he sensed an emergency and called the police station. Consequently, their boss sent a team to assist him immediately. However, when her brother followed the tracks, they led to the water. While he was standing there searching for a clue, someone struck the back of his head and pushed him backward. The attacker left him to drown, but his team rescued him, performed CPR, and saved him from drowning. Fortunately, he survived after extensive medical intervention and 100 stitches. Her brother reported that the attacker had a bear tattooed on his back. To this day, people here believe it's some kind of disease, but no one knows the truth. Suddenly, Chris loses consciousness due to massive blood loss from her leg. The woman stops the car and tries to wrap Chris's leg before moving further. She keeps talking to her. When Chris regains consciousness, she asks the woman to start driving quickly, but the woman doesn't listen. Meanwhile, Johnny has obtained his mother's necklace, and the movie ends here.